Hi, I'm James Catherall, founder of Catherall Audio. So, a new Logic Pro update version 11.1 .1 was just released. It contains a lot of quality of life improvements that people have been asking for a long time now. This feels like the better late than never update, and we're going to talk all about it. But first, let's talk about the safe way to update the app. You can do this for pretty much any app on your Mac that doesn't have an easy way to revert back to old versions. This can give you the peace of mind to update, but still have the ability to go back to an old version if the new update is giving you major issues. Start by opening up the application section in the Finder window. Right-click Logic Pro and select Duplicate. Once it's done duplicating, rename the copied one. You can name it whatever you want. I usually add parentheses to the end and put whatever version it is. This makes it pretty easy at a glance to know which version is which, especially if you've done this a lot and have a bunch of old versions stocked up. Once that's done, you can go to the App Store and safely update Logic Pro. You'll know you've done it right by looking at the preview on the side of the Finder window and at the bottom, it'll show you which version that highlighted app will be using. So now, if you have some type of catastrophic compatibility issue with the new version, you can just open up the older version which you were previously running on and you're good to go. Now, with that done, let's start looking at the updates. They added a new reverb plugin, the Quantec Room Simulator, which is a software emulation of the hardware from the 80s. It contains emulations of two devices, the Room Simulator and the Yardstick which is often used in movies and other recordings to be able to put people in a realistic space in post-production. A lot of movie dialogue is re-recorded after the video shoot is done because quality of audio can be unpredictable due to wind, rain, ambient sounds, animal noises, or any other wide range of factors. So they re-record it in a controlled studio booth, and that's where something like the Quantec Room Simulator would come into play. You can then place that completely dry track into a space that'll replicate the actual acoustics to make the audience believe the audio is recorded in the space that the scene is set in. It's a really fun plugin to play with that comes with a whole bunch of presets and lots of parameters to mess around with. And it really is just another reverb plugin, so you don't necessarily have to use it for what I was just talking about. You can also just use it as another reverb to add onto your tracks for a reverb effect. And this is an officially licensed emulation, which allows them to put the Quantec label on the plugin. Now for the quality of life improvements. They've added a search function in a lot of different places. I've seen a lot of people that are excited for the ability to search for plugins, but it goes so much deeper than just that. You can click on a plugin drop-down menu, and at the top, you'll see a search bar. You can type in a specific name or a manufacturer's name or even just a broad type of plugin and get results that make the process significantly faster. This applies for the audio effects section, the software instruments section, and the MIDI effects section. But it gets better. You can press Control Command P and a pop-up window will appear, really similar to the spotlight search on your desktop. This will add a plugin to your currently selected track without needing to click a single menu, but it gets even better. This search function also applies to sends and output selection. So when you're deep into mixing a track and you have 38 different aux sends set up, you can type in the bus number or the name of the aux track and quickly add it to the channel. Next, you can rearrange the tracks in the mixer window. Just click and drag them around in the mixer and it will also rearrange them in the main tracks area. You can rearrange one track at a time or multiple by highlighting one track, hold shift and select a different track and it'll highlight everything in between and you can drag all of them together. You can also hold command and click different tracks and when you drag them, it'll bunch them all up together and then you can move them to a different spot in the mixer. Next, you can now quickly remove plugins and sends by holding command, and you'll see that the cursor turns into an eraser, and then you can click the plugin or send and it'll immediately remove it, reducing it from a two-click process down to a one-click process. You can add the sample rate and buffer size to the LCD display at the top. I really like this one because the sample rate is in a really odd and out of the way menu. This now allows you to change either of those quickly by clicking on them in the LCD display. This is also great for the buffer size since it's usually a good practice to record with the lowest buffer size that your computer can comfortably handle. That way the latency is as low as possible. And then bump the size back up when mixing to lower the strain on your CPU. Next, you can hide the mastering assistant from the stereo output by opening the settings, 
Go to the View section, click on the Mixer tab and the checkbox is here at the top. It'll hide the separate section on the channel strip, but you can still add the Mastering Assistant by clicking the audio effects and you'll see it right here. They've added a new function to the Bounce in Place, so you can now choose to condense all of the highlighted regions into one file, or make one file for each highlighted track, or create a separate file for each individually highlighted region. This can make it a bit quicker when using the Bounce in Place for a lot of tracks at once, but when you still want all of them to be separately mixable. There are a couple new sound packs that can be downloaded. If you want to listen to them, you can open the Loops browser and choose them from the Sound Packs drop-down menu at the top. They are the Modular Melodies and the Pom Pom Packs. Now, this may be a minor update, but it added a lot of functionality improvements that users have been asking for a long time. They may feel like they were common sense improvements, but it's better late than never. And it's good to see the developers listening to users and adding things that have been requested by a large audience. Are there any functionality improvements that you think are still missing from Logic Pro? Let me know in the comments down below. And if this video is helpful, I would really appreciate it if you left a like. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.